Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. Today's topic is an interesting and an important topic that is intercostal drain or chest tube drainage. Before getting into the topic, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel. Okay, let's get into the topic. Intercostal drain or chest tube drainage. Chest tube is a hollow flexible tube placed into the intercostal space. It acts as a drain. Chest tubes drain blood, fluid, or air from the pleural cavity. Now, let's have a look on the important functions of chest drains or underwater sealed drains. Chest drains are inserted to allow air, blood, or pus from the pleural cavity. It restores negative pressure in the pleural space to re-expand the lung. It promotes adequate gas exchange. It prevents drained air and fluid from returning to the pleural space. Here you can clearly visualize the membranes of the lungs, the parietal pleura, pleural cavity and visceral pleura. Let's look into the conditions where chest drains or ICDs are indicated. Hemothorax Hemothorax is the accumulation of blood within the pleural cavity. Next comes Pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is the accumulation of air in the pleural space between the lung and the chest wall. Next comes Tension Pneumothorax. Tension pneumothorax is a condition when air goes inside the pleural cavity but cannot come out of it. Hence, there is air trapping and ipsilateral lung is compressed. It happens even when the chest drains are clamped for a certain period of time. Next is Hemopneumothorax. Hemopneumothorax is the accumulation of blood and air within the pleural cavity. Next comes chylothorax. Chyle in the pleural cavity. Chylothorax is a rare condition in which lymphatic fluid leaks into the space between the lung and the chest wall. When this fluid builds up in the lung, it can cause a severe cough, chest pain and difficulty breathing. Next is Empyema. Empyema is defined as a collection of pus in the pleural cavity. Next will be Pleural Evusion. A buildup of fluid between the tissues that line the lungs and the chest is called the pleural evusion. Some of the lung and heart surgeries may also need intercostal drainage postoperatively. Now, looking into the site of the chest tube drainage insertion, in case of hemothorax, chest tube is inserted in 4th to 6th intercostal space at the mid-axillary line. And in case of pneumothorax, chest tube is inserted in 2nd or 3rd intercostal space in the anterior chest at the mid-clavicular line. Let's get into the types of drainage systems we have single bottle double bottle and three bottled drainage systems single bottle drainage system the chamber serves as a fluid collector and a water seal during inspiration fluid in the chamber ascends and during expiration fluid in the chamber descends Two bottle drainage system. The use of two chamber permits any fluid to flow into the collection chamber as air flows into the water seal chamber. Two bottle system are used when larger amounts of drainage are expected. You can see the picture here where one container is used as the trap bottle and the other one is water seal. Next comes three bottle drainage system. When air or fluid 
needs to be removed with control the suction. All three chambers are used. Usually, 15 to 20 cm of water pressure is used for adults. Distance below water is equal to negative pressure generator when suction is applied. One container is used as the trap bottle, the other one will be the water seal and the third will be the suction bottle. When the gravity is not enough or respiration is too weak, three bottle system is used. Here you can see the function of a pleural drainage system explained as a flowchart. Inspiration causes increase in the intrapleural pressure whereby air and fluid moves into the bottle. The intrapleural space becomes negative causing the lung to re-expand which becomes a cycle thereby. Now, principles of the chest tube. There are three main principles of the chest tube. Gravity, water seal and suction. Gravity is chest drain placed below the patient's bed. Water seal prevents backflow. Suction is applied if the gravity is not enough or respiration is too weak. The purpose why suction is needed is when gravity drainage is not enough or when patient's respiration and cuff are too weak or the air leak is passed into the pleural space or when there is a need to speed up removal from the pleural space. Nurses' responsibilities for a patient who is on ICD includes monitoring vital signs, oxygen saturation, pain assessment, position, checkpoints of chest drainage, and intake output chart. Vital signs are monitored every 15 minutes for the first hour postoperatively and for every 30 minutes for the next 2 hours and hourly thereafter. Checkpoints of an ICD includes site, tubing and drainage bag or the bottle. Nurses responsibility regarding the site includes Check the insertion site for oozing or discharge or surgical emphysema. Nurses' responsibilities regarding chest tube includes Check for any kink or pressure over chest tubing which may obstruct the flow of drainage. Ensure that the patient is not lying over the tubing. Milking the tube helps to dislodge the mucus plaque because it may also obstruct the flow. Observe for the fluctuating movement of fluid inside the tubing. Avoid unnecessary clamping. Nurses' responsibilities regarding drainage bag includes Make sure that the water seal and suction are at the appropriate levels. Check for air bubbling in water seal bottle. Intermittent bubbling is the normal one. Continuous bubbling indicates air leaks. Check for tidaling. Fluid level ascends with inspiration and descends with expiration. Tidaling stops when the lungs get reinflated. Regarding the drainage, document the drainage amount or quantity hourly. Document the drainage color, for example, clear yellow to bloody in nature. Notify the doctor if the quantity or color of the fluid varies. Now, regarding the position of the patient, Fowler's position will be the most suitable one because fluid can be localized in the lower pleural space and can be drained down easily. Movement of the patient on bed helps the fluid to drain from the chest. How do we empty the water seal drainage bag or the bottle? Clamp the tubing first. Next is to empty the drainage. Refill the bag with saline or water up to the water seal level. Then unclamp the tubing. In case of accidental removal of chest tube, 
immediately seal up the insertion site with sterile gauze. Removal of ICD is indicated when drainage is less than 100 to 150 ml for 24 hours. When the chest x-rays show that the lung is expanded fully. Absence of air leak while patient performs deep breath and coughing. Some of the situations when we notify the physician are if the drainage is more than 70 ml per hour, sudden onset of dyspnea, when the oxygen saturation drops below 90%, when the chest tube disconnects from the drainage system. If so, immediately put the end of the tube in a container with water and keep it below the chest level before informing the physician. Here you go with the intracostal drainage system or the chest tube drainage system. If you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe it and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.